Do you guys remember Hero Escape? You know, that miniature war game that we all thought was a board game that had those little hexagonal tiles? Remember you could build your own battlefield with those tiles and put together an army using this like huge variety of figures and Hasbro advertised it as the battle of all time. 15 years ago, it felt like this game was everywhere. Every time you'd walk into Walmart, Target, Toys R Us, you could expect to see the master set and the expansions on the shelves. But then in 2010, Hasbro pulled the plug, leaving us wondering, what happened to Heroescape? First, we need to go back in time to 2004. Hasbro and Milton Bradley released the Rise of the Valkyrie master set, which if Christmas on my street that year was any indication, was a huge success. The master set included 30 figures of unique units, which meant you can only have one in your army. It also had 85 pieces of terrain, or 87 if you included the ruins that came with it. Those numbers are important. Then in January of 2005, Hasbro rolled out the first expansion wave. Maladin's Prophecy. This gave us 11 more units spread over four packs. It also introduced common units where you could have more than one in your army. Of those four packs, three of them were common units and one of them had unique units. Five months later, Hasbro drops Utgar's Rage, another expansion wave giving us 10 more units spread over four packs again. Just like in wave one, three of those packs had common units and one of those had unique units. Now this would be Hasbro's MO over the next four years. By June of 2009, Heroescape had nine expansion waves featuring a plethora of units you could choose from. And this is where we run into our first problem. If Dick's Game Store wanted to stock up on a Heroescape expansion wave, they had to buy every single pack in the set. Now of course that's fine and dandy when they're first released because everyone's you know getting the new units, but what about three months down the line? If all the hardcore players in Townsville picked up all of the common packs, packs, there's no more common packs left, and you're stuck with a bunch of unique packs. Now nobody's buying the unique packs because nobody wants the duplicates because you aren't allowed to use duplicate unique units. But if Dick wanted to restock on the expansion wave, he can't just buy the common packs. He has to buy everything together, which means he's like doubling his inventory of unique units, which as we mentioned, aren't selling. Now Dick probably doesn't want to do that, which means the packs that people want are out of stock, which means fewer sales, which means... Back to the timeline. Now in 2007, Hasbro dropped the second master set, Swarm of the Morrow. Swarm of the Morrow gave us 25 figures and 75 terrain pieces. Remember, those numbers are important. That same year, like literally a month later, Hasbro dropped Marvel Heroescape, which was a weird crossover. They gave us 10 figures from Marvel Comics and like 40 pieces of city terrain. Now are you seeing a theme here? Now the final master set dropped three years later. Hasbro had transferred Heroescape from Milton Bradley to this little known subsidiary called Wizards of the Coast. The corporate overlords told the corporate underlords, here's a really small budget, go make this profitable. So Wizards of the Coast put together another crossover. This time it was with Dungeons and Dragons, which in 2010 was enjoying tremendous popularity with its hugely successful fourth edition. So Wizards of the Coast put out Master set number four, or three if you don't count the Marvel one, Battle for the Underdark. For 30 bucks, you'd get 10 figures and 50 terrain pieces. Remember, those numbers are important. Now, hardcore fans were a little bit disappointed as Wizards had reused models from their D&D miniatures line, which I didn't even know they had. And the recycled minis didn't live up to the quality of the core line. But the offshoot did do well enough to get us three more D&D themed expansion waves in 2010 before Hasbro pulled the plug. Fun fact, Hasbro announced that they were canceling Heroescape right before the last expansion wave was dropped. Now, in case you weren't keeping track, Battle for the Underdark had 15 fewer figures and 25 fewer terrain pieces than Swarm of the Morrow. And Swarm of the Morrow gave us five fewer figures and 10 fewer terrain pieces than Rise of the Valkyrie. Gee, I wonder why they're giving us fewer pieces. Because it's expensive as f to produce. Now, I don't know how much raw plastic costs, I don't know how much it costs to mold the figures, and I sure as hell don't know how much it costs to paint them all. But Hasbro was selling master sets for $35 and expansion waves for $12. That's dope for a consumer, but there is no way that's profitable. 
they would have to be moving cartel levels of product to start making money. And the only way you're gonna move that amount of product on that scale is by phenomenal marketing, which leads us to issue three and probably what ultimately killed HeroScape. Outside of that initial kind of iconic commercial, how many ads for HeroScape do you really remember seeing? I had no idea expansion waves were even a thing until I got quasi hardcore and discovered HeroScapers.com. I mean, theoretically there was a commercial for Swarm of the Morrow when that was released, but I never saw it. In fact, the first time I saw it was when I was looking up the OG commercial to put together this video. In fact, I only learned Swarm of the Morrow had even come out because I saw a YouTube video of some guy playing it at Gen Con. Also, speaking of videos, there wasn't any sort of soft presence of HeroScape online or in paper. Like, there was no lore whatsoever. Yeah, whatever, you had your good faction, you had your evil faction, and then you had three neutral factions for some reason. None of them had like any elaboration on them whatsoever, and individual units had maybe a paragraph of lore. And there certainly wasn't any media surrounding the overall story. Like, I think there were maybe two cartoons that didn't really explain anything about the story. There was no lore that you could read online whatsoever. As far as we knew, there was the battle for all time, and like, that was it. There was no backstory to it whatsoever. Create your own backstory, I guess, which is cool, but that is not how you sustain a brand. It almost feels like Hasbro thought they were marketing Connect 4 rather than a 40K offshoot. Ultimately, the only time I ever really saw HeroScape beyond its niche corners of the internet in like 2007 and 2008 was on store shelves, where I asked my mom to buy it because HeroScape's dope. 